Bye. I am not here with another For Real Supergirl vlog. And I am not going to do the entire thing like that because I would drive myself insane. But, yes. Uh, Bizarro! I found the episode good. But I also hammered home something I realized not too long after last episode aired. Sorry about that, but, um... It seems so far, all they're doing... Or, actually, they're not, that's not all they're doing. I, that's not fair. But what they're starting to do, and if I'm recalling correctly, I think it started with the introduction of Nam... They are just giving her Superman's enemies. I mean, again, when it was just Toy Man, you know, I didn't even make the I didn't make the Nom connection until just now. But when it was just Toy Man, fine, okay. But this week it's Bizarro, and next week they're doing for the girl who has everything, which when I. I found that out when I looked up the title for this week's episode, and I caught one synop line of the synopsis, and it's based on the classic Alan Moore Superman story. And don't get me wrong, it really is a brilliant story. I loved, I loved the original when I finally got to read it. I love the episode of Justice League that they built around it. And I'm sure next week's episode is going to be really, really well done. But they're treating her like she's just Superman in a skirt, and that's not fair. It's just, she's her own character. I mean, there's been all sorts of videos and other analysis explaining that back in the 70s, or whenever she was introduced, she was very much a different character, and most... Most of them argue a more interesting character because Superman was the paragon of virtue and everything. He was never allowed to make mistakes. He always had to be right all the time. You know, maybe it was part, part of the sexism of the time, but Supergirl was allowed to make mistakes. She was allowed to learn, allowed to grow. So, yeah, while that may not apply here, the whole... The whole idea that she's just Superman wearing a skirt really irks me, because that misses the entire point. So I'm really hoping if the show gets a second season, or maybe towards the end of this season, that will start to... They'll stop doing that as so much. I mean, I personally, I don't understand why they're not at the very least, trying to create original villains? Because as far as I know, Astra didn't exist outside this show. She didn't exist before this show. And for all intents and purposes, this is the first time we've seen her mother, because I don't know if she ever got... Well, okay, no. She was in the comics not too long ago, and she was a psycho, but still, they're actually doing something with the mother, which, again, doesn't happen very often, so she may as well be an original character. This version of... Yeah, I'm, I'm actually missing my point at this point. Uh, it's just... And it's especially frustrating because once I made this connection, I realized even the one villain they had that was originally Supergirls, they connected him to Superman. Reactron, again, as far as I know, was originally intended to be a Supergirl villain. I mean, I never heard of him until those comic books. He was great in those comic books. I know I mentioned this before, but they were I really remember their feeling like they're trying to build him up that she, Reactron was going to be her Joker or her Lex Luthor or her Green Goblin. Granted they ended up killing him, I'm pretty sure, but still and if I am wrong, please feel free to correct me. So they took the one original Supergirl villain and connected him to Superman. And, again, it just, it just doesn't really seem fair. And it probably ties back to the inherent sexism that the show has to deal with or something. I don't know. But it's, it's really disappointing and disheartening for me. 
I mean, maybe they can't create their own too many. They maybe they don't want to create their too many new characters because there might become some kind of legal thing with um, CBS. Maybe CBS owns part of Astra and they'll never be able to use her in the comics. I don't know. But it's just it's really frustrating. I want this to be super. I want it to be her show. I want it to be her own. So, yeah, that's that's really frustrating and disappointing for me. Now, that said, the episode, taken completely on its own merits, the show, the episode was really good. One of the better episodes, at least since Human for a Day. First of all, um... According to what my roommate read online, they didn't do screen, green screen body double stuff for the battles when it was Bizarro, you know, pre messed up face. They got a separate actress. Now, if that's true, they cast amazingly well. That could have been Melissa's twin. That was freaking uncanny. More than likely, it was probably she filled in the role once her face got messed up and they could hide the differences with makeup. Either way, the actress did a very good job. The fights were kind of eh in places, but in other places, the fights were really good. I especially liked seeing a Supergirl versus Kara fight. That was really cool. And they even did the whole Bizarro has fire breath and ice vision instead. So that, that was a lot of fun. The, I mean, I wasn't expecting him to do that. So when Bizarro breathed fire, I was like, holy crap. So that, that was really cool. And again, I really will get to the whole video so I can discuss the whole Lex Luthor, Maxwell Lord thing more in depth without this particular vlog being 20 minutes long, but there's no denying they got a very good actor for that role. And the moment where he is arrested was fantastic, especially when, you know, Alex being as badass as she is slams his head into the table. And the look on his face is just, this was not what I was expecting. It was just, a perfect little moment, and, you know, again, one good thing about them using Max Lord this way, Bizarro's first words are, yes, my lord, and it's not only pretty clever, but it was actually kind of chilling. Very well done. Uh, and again, they... They get... And for everything they get wrong, they get some things perfect. The, the, the last scene where Supergirl is holding Bizarro's hand. Just, again, you know, gets me here. Oh, speaking of, um, well, I don't, I don't know why this trigger, but this is one thing I definitely want to make sure to mention. The love triangle came up in this episode. And not only was it great to see Win again, you know, I'm I'm really happy. He he needs to be in more ep more of more episodes, but he he was back. He was in full form. And again, Jeremy Jordan, you're doing a wonderful job. But apparently, James feels for Kara too. Didn't come up, really come up until now. Not not really, not in any major way. But once. When realizes it, he encourages James to go after it. And if they have to do a love triangle, I'm glad they're doing it in a way that the two guys can still be friends. They aren't rivals. They aren't trying to sabotage each other. And again, you know, why I'm enjoying Wynn so much, I like to think if I were in that situation, I would do what he did. So again, you know, I, I don't I don't I don't hate the love triangle because 
of how they're doing it. I'm just annoyed that there's a love triangle at all. They're, they've been done to death. There's no need for it. But at least they're doing it well. So I, I give them props for that. But, you know, um, Alex was a badass. Maxwell Lord, again, the saving that for another video, but at least he's very well acted. The the actor is, I can never remember his name. I don't, I don't know his name. I don't remember his name. I don't know it. But you can tell he's having a blast with the role. Um, more great um, Cat Grant stuff. And as much as I was going on about how I didn't think I liked the idea of Kara dating Adam in my last vlog, there I it's still hit me in the heart when, you know, she said goodbye and, you know, and he was like, oh, I thought it'd be my issues that drove me away. It's again, and again, just why I'm relating to this particular version of Supergirl, I think, is it's come up. She's trying to help everyone all the time, and I do that. One of my many mental issues is I'm learning, trying to learn how to take care of myself instead of trying to take care of everybody else. So the idea that they are actually just, oh, Kara, you're just trying to help everyone relax. They are actually turning it into somewhat of an issue, a personality flaw. And I appreciate that. You, you've got to learn to take care of yourself. I mean, there's a great, you know, it's a, it's a Facebook meme, but it doesn't make it any less true. It's you can't pour from an empty cup. So, yeah, it's very important to learn how to take care of yourself. And I've gotten better over it over the last year or so, but I I still tend to put other people before myself when I shouldn't. So I just... Yeah, again, the whole she needs her own villains thing was very, very frustrating. I'm probably going to be very frustrated next week, too, but that doesn't change the fact that they're doing a very good job with what they're doing. So, you know, please, please make some original villains. Please dig up some old villains from the Silver Age. She probably has them. I honestly don't know. And uh, CBS All Access, you didn't make me miss anything this week, but you were pixelated as all hell through about half the episode. So again, please get better so you're worth the $5 a month. Anyway, I think that's it this time. Uh, see you guys next week.